Hello and welcome back. I'm Lincoln and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to make a brush that's going to make stitches and rope just like this. Super easy and super fast. It's just like painting them on. You're going to use two brushes for the stitches to make them a little more realistic, but we'll go through everything and how to make them. All right, so grab your iPad and let's get sculpting. All right, first thing we're going to come in and we're going to increase the topology on this. So we'll subdivide it a few times. Now you notice these, I had in the comment in the last video, these menus have changed a little bit just so you know where they're at. This is topology now and that's your scene menu. Just for any of you that hasn't seen this yet, I'm still in the 1.66 right now. It's the beta version. First thing I'm going to show you a quick demo of how these work and we'll leave symmetry on for a second. Now I want to show you, that looks pretty good right here, but if you if you get a little too far off off camera, off the camera view, you see these look pretty good, and then this brush will start to fail on you up here if you're out of out of sight of it. But if we turn symmetry off, so you can see if we bring it up here on camera, we can still bring it up and get it to match up pretty good. So that looks pretty nice right there. Okay, so then the second part of this brush is the second alpha that you put in here, and you just kind of let it, and I'm not quite lining them up right. Bring it in here and just let those stitches fall in, just like that. And you can kind of see how the stitches fall, just like that. So if you get one like this and you want to finish stitching off, just grab this one with, you know, just a round brush and just kind of do it like that. And this one might have to do it two or three times because it needs to be a little deeper. So there you go, that's how you can do that. So let's go and appropriate and I'll show you what these look like real quick. And this is just a stack. These are 500 by 500 pixels at 300 DPI and that's good enough. Okay, and I have another video I can link to that'll show you how to make these really quick and easy. So we'll go in here and grab the monoline and the calligraphy. And you gotta go, so this is pure white and this is the gray we want first. Somewhere in the middle right there. Max it out. Just one quick little swift line. Go to the eraser, airbrushing, medium air, medium airbrush. Increase the intensity, that will help. There we go. Not quite that big. There we go, just three lumps basically and just kind of shape them. Well, I'm not gonna to get too crazy with this one. Now, I'll go through this real quick. It may take you a few tries to get this right. I know it took me two or three tries to get mine right, how I wanted it just right. So that's, that's close enough for what we want. Now we're gonna go in, we're gonna add a layer. Now we're gonna tap on the layer and we're gonna Hit clipping mask you see that little arrow you know you're clipping all that means is this layer is gonna only paint on top of that gray paint right there that's in the layer below it so now we're gonna grab not pure white but somewhere in between and we're just gonna do whoops not that big three little lines something like that we're gonna go up the adjustments layer or adjustments menu Gaussian blur and blur it out to where it's almost nothing. Where it's almost gone. Somewhere in there. You can see how it's just, there's not much. Just about right there. We'll do this one more time. And the reason we're doing the clipping mask, that way when you blur this, if you don't, it'll blur out past and it will pick up what's in the black. So you're going to make sure that you have that where you want it. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go ahead and go to pure white now. Three little dots again. Dodge and blur again. And blur this out to where it's pretty much gone. So when you look at it now, we've got a real nice gradation around there and that's what you really want. So now we're gonna grab all three of these layers in the adjustments selection tab there. We're gonna go to uniform. Let's get this thing set in the middle. Just like that where the two yellow lines are. It's perfect. Now we're gonna grab 
one more. Just click on that to unselect all these. And if you do that, that selects them for you so you can move more than one at a time. We'll grab one more layer. Now this one, we're gonna go to pure black. Go back to this one, monoline good, and we'll max it out. And we're just gonna go right around pretty much the edge of everything. This way when we blur this one this time, we just wanna blur it to where it's, it still has an edge, but it's not as much. And if you want, you can always come up and erase just a little bit of that out. Where it's kind of a clean but you got to be careful of this is probably gonna end up making a peak but that's okay we're just I'm just showing you how to get in here and kind of make this happen so that that looks pretty nice I like that you just got to be careful because it's you don't want these edges to be too harsh otherwise it'll come up the model and just peak up and you don't want that okay so we'll save that one canvas Share it as a JPEG. Save to files. Nomad alphas. Save. All right. Now we're going to go back to the gallery. We're done with that one. Let's do one more real quick. And this one's even easier. This one will go to pure white. And we need to be monoline again. We're good. Just a real quick short line. And if you hold it, Press and hold, you'll see it goes to that straight line for you. Now we're gonna go to transform tool again, uniform, and we're gonna bring this this one to the center. Pick up your pencil, just makes it easier to get your center points that way if you pick up between each center line. Now we're gonna go to warp, advanced mesh. We're gonna tweak these out. It's just a matter of getting it just how you want it. You want those to be kind of those legs to be out a little bit like this. It goes, you want it to kind of go around the stitching. Click. Okay, like that. And then actually, we'll go to freeform and let's squeeze this down just a little bit. That'll, that'll fit better. And then back to warp. Maybe. Yeah, we better do advanced. A little bit more squeeze on the sides. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna come in the eraser, medium hard again. Just knock those points off. You don't want the real sharp points. That'll that'll give you problems in your mesh later. Now, we're gonna blur this a bit. If you don't do the blur. And it'll be so it'll be really harsh and you want a pretty good blur on this and you can see that's it's got quite a bit of blur something like that and we'll just check to make sure we're still sort of in the center again there we go all right so that one's ready send this one off JPEG again, save the files, Nomad Alphas, save. Okay, we'll come up here. Now we need to swipe up and close Nomad. Now we got your two files coming in. If you don't do that, you won't get your two files coming in. So these two, these two were cloned off these two, and these two were cloned off. One was off the layer, and this was off the brush. So that's just different properties and I, I go over that in a different video as well. So we're gonna click on the extrude and clone that one. Okay, and then this one extrude will clone this guy. Okay, so that's the two. So now we'll fix our properties. Or 
first thing, go into the alphas and change. So this is the stitch line, so we need to change that to the stitch alpha. So we're going to come down, we'll, we'll change the scaling a little bit, maybe down a little. We'll see how that works. You don't have to mess with any of that too much. Now we're going to come up here. You need to give this thing, this particular brush, a little something, something kind of like that. Whoops, not the black ones though, not the sharp lines. Now here's the big one is the stroke spacing and Okay, let's give it a little bit more intensity. Give it a little more size so we can see what it is. There we go. Let's pin that open. So we need to give it a little bit more stroke spacing. No, it's gonna have to be, we may have to scale it down. And we're also going to adjust this a little bit. There we go, that's better. So it's not perfect, but it'll kind of give you an idea of where to start and you can go back into Procreate and get this one a little more dialed in. So then the sub stitch. Let's see, we need to set this one, I guess. That's not going to be what we want. Okay, so we got that for the alpha. The scaling, that's probably about right. Now this one, the fall off on this one's way different. Oops, that's still not it. Something, something kind of like that is what you want. And you want it to be on grab dynamic radius. And there it is right there. Maybe not quite so intense. You want it basically where it hits the edge of each stitch. And it could be a little bit longer as you can see. Because it's not... It's not uh, stretching past the stitch as much. But that's another one, just go in and grab the warp tool and adjust it a little bit more. Because if you go up big enough to where it's going to do that, it's not going to look right. So it could use a little of adjustment. But if you tweak it enough, you can get it to look like these. I want to show you that once you, once you get this dialed in, you can turn this one into a rope really easy if you decrease your spacing now you have a nice rope that goes all over the place if you rotate this stitch now you can make a stitch pattern like this and it's hard to catch it just right but if you get it just right you can get it to you can make the X's which is kind of tough let's increase the size and it'll make it a little bit easier it's kind of cool if you want to make cross stitches we also need to increase the spacing a little bit. There we go. That'll be easier to catch the opposite rotation. About right there. So you can make those. Right there. Rotate back again. And it's just a matter of where you place. You just have to figure out where you need to place your first stitch to get the second one to go make the X's. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this and you're having fun watching these tutorials, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. All right, thanks.